Would you believe me if I told you that Canada's Wonderland's Leviathan actually takes up more room than Fury 325? Seriously, it's true, and you're going to find out how that's even possible, plus tons of things that you never knew about Giga Coasters and my in-depth breakdown of just how large a Giga Roller Coaster really is. At the time of this video, only three roller coaster manufacturers have been brave enough to go over 300 feet, and those would be B&M, Intamin, and Morgan. To date, B&M and Intamin have built 3 gigas each, and Morgan has only built one. For this video, I'm only going to be focusing on the giga coasters that offer a lift hill. So sadly, Red Force will not be a part of the video since it features an LSM launch. To get a better idea on the true size of a giga coaster and how much room their layouts take up, it's time to get technical. Let's first take a look at the B&M Gigas. Leviathan, located at Canada's Wonderland, features a 306 foot tall lift hill and drop. This was B&M's first ever giga coaster and the plot of land that the lift hill and 80 degree drop sits on is only 700 feet long. Leviathan's intimidating lift hill features minimal supports with the widest ones being 140 feet across. B&M's giga designs only have five major support sections to hold up the entire lift hill and first drop. Now the main reason why B&M can get away with so few supports is the very intelligent design of their Giga's first drop. As you can see, near the base of the first drop, the track spine is also a part of the support structure for the coaster. And this is what I like to call genius engineering. As soon as the train starts to pull out towards the base of the first drop, the track then separates from the main track spine. This engineering feat saves money and reduces the amount of supports that are needed to construct the massive lift hill. Leviathan features seven elements after the ride's enormous first drop, and the entire footprint of the coaster takes up just over seven and a half acres. Heading down to Carowinds for Fury 325, the total length of land a park would need to fit a 325 foot tall lift hill would only be 730 feet. This includes Fury's 320 foot tall drop that is at an 81 degree angle. The widest set of supports on Fury is only 17 feet wider than Leviathan's at 157 feet wide. So really, there isn't that big of difference width-wise between Fury supports over Leviathan's. And I'm talking about the largest support the coaster offers. Fury 325 features 9 elements after the initial first drop, and the overall area Fury covers is just over 6.6 .6 acres. Which is shocking since Fury 325 features 1,116 feet more track than Leviathan, making it the longest steel roller coaster in all of North America. So how exactly can Leviathan take up more real estate than Fury? Well, to show you how, let's examine the footprint for each coaster via Google Maps. And as you can see, both coasters feature an L-shaped layout, but notice any difference within the layouts. You might notice that Leviathan's layout is a little wider, especially around the lift hill, brake run, and the first turn. Whereas those elements on Fury are all a little more condensed. Heading to Kings Island for B&M's latest Giga, Orion, which features only a 287 foot tall lift hill, but does offer a 300 foot tall drop at a very steep 85 degrees. Now the distance from the base of Orion's lift to the lowest point of the first drop is only 620 feet with the bases of the largest supports being only 127 feet apart, which is 13 feet less than the width of Leviathan's largest support. The total area that Orion takes up is roughly 6.3 acres. B&M has created three amazing gigas that all offer great elements within their respective layouts. But there's another company out there that has also built a few gigas. And of course, that company is Intamin. To break down the measurements of their two gigas that offer a lift hill, let's head to Cedar Point for Millennium Force. 
When this 310 foot tall roller coaster opened in 2000, it was a huge deal. Not only was it the tallest roller coaster in the world at the time, it was also one of the fastest and the longest. Not only that, but when Millennium Force opened, it offered a ride layout like we've never seen before. That's because Intamin designed this layout to include three overbank turns, a 45 degree cable lift hill, an 80 degree first drop, and the amazing stadium style seating that the trains offered. From the moment the train catches onto the cable lift all the way to Millennium's first drop, it only takes up 600 feet in length. When you add on the underrated first overbank turn on Millie, it only adds 275 feet onto the length of the lift hill and first drop. Millennium's layout consists of nine elements after the first drop, including the two high-speed turns that both fly through the coaster's tunnels. The placement of Millennia Force really is a beauty since Cedar Point was able to squeeze this enormous T-shaped layout into the park which became arguably one of the most popular roller coasters in the world. Surprisingly though, the entire layout for Millennium Force just takes up 5.8 acres. Heading southeast to King's Dominion to take a look at the world's most intense giga coaster and that is Intimidator 305. Now here is something that you're going to find hard to believe. With a height of 305 feet and a drop of 300 feet, I-305 is only 471 feet from the start of the lift hill to the base of the first drop. That's 129 feet shorter than Millennium's. And what's even crazier is there's only a 5 foot height difference between Millennium and I-305. With a steeper lift hill and drop, Intimate made it possible to build a 300 foot tall lift hill and drop in a very skinny and short plot of land. The rest of Intimidator's layout covers just over 6.7 acres and features 11 elements when you add up the major turns and hills. Another staggering fact about what really makes Intimidator, well, intimidating is the supports of the lift hill are only 26 feet wide at the base. Yes, the base of the enormous 305 foot tall lift hill, by the way, only offers two major supports, is really only 26 feet long, which is no longer than a mini school bus. The concrete pads that the two supports sit on are only 40 feet wide. So if a park does not have a ton of room, then having an intimate lift hill and drop like the one 305 offers is by far the way to go. That's if Intamin is still wanting to go with this design. And they have proven that if a park wants a Giga and doesn't have the 600 to 750 feet of room for a lift hill and drop, then Intamin would be the way to go. But it's been since 2010, sadly, since Intamin has built a Giga with a lift hill. So I want your opinion. Will we ever see them build another one? And if so, which park? Please let me know in the comments. Since you already most likely know the rankings in terms of height for the world's Giga Coasters, I wanted to break down just how long each one really is. Coming in last place is Intimidator 305 at 5,100 feet. Number 4 would be Orion with 5,321 feet. Number 3 is Leviathan which features 5,486 feet of track. Number two is Millennium Force at 6,595 feet. And then number one would of course be Fury 325 and Carowind's Giga offers 6,602 feet of track. So now that we know just how much room a lift hill and a drop of a Giga Coaster really takes up, it's the rest of the coaster's layout that is hard to judge. But from what we know from the other five Gigas is that the layout can maneuver around other attractions and honestly, if placed carefully within a current park layout, it can be done. With that, I have a very bold prediction to make. And that is, I so predict Elitch's Gardens is going to be building a 340 foot tall, 7,000 foot long Giga Coaster that's going to be opening in 2023. And that prediction is for all of my great friends over on the Roller Coaster Jerk subreddit on Reddit.
Now, obviously, that prediction was just a joke. So I'm really sorry to all my Denver fans. But yeah, the gig is definitely not going to be happening. But in terms of space, there are a lot of parks out there that could easily fit a Giga Coaster within their current footprint. However, space is not the only issue with the Giga Coaster because the park has to number one, be able to afford a coaster of this magnitude and number two, be able to build a coaster that goes the height of a Giga. So knowing what you know now, what parks do you think realistically could spend $25 million plus to build a Giga Coaster? Be sure to let me know in the comments and as always, thank you so much for watching. Remember to smile today, think positive and keep riding coasters.